In this video, we'll create a dice roller app. So I went ahead and created a dice roller uh, class that has nothing right now. And as usual, we will go ahead and extend JFrame. So this is going to be extending JFrame. And I will need to import it so I can just go Control Shift O. Uh, what I need to do is I will need to create a frame. So JFrame frame is uh, I'll not set it to anything right now I'll initialize it in my constructor so I will go ahead and say uh, public and this is going to be dice roller so this is my constructor for the class and um, I will not have any arguments in there it's, to, it's going to initialize my frame so frame is equal to new j frame and I will give it a title right here and let me call it dice roller and what I need to do after this is I need to give it a size so for right now let's just set the size to be 500 by 500 so frame.set size to something like 500 by 500 and um, let me make sure that I set the default operation to exit on close. So frame dot set default close operation to jframe dot exit on close. Okay. Uh, now I will need to add some more things to this, but I just need to make sure that this works. So I will go ahead and say frame dot set visible to true this is one of the things that may prevent you from seeing your frame and this is the other thing that may prevent you from seeing your application which is creating an object of your class so dice roller d is equal to new dice roller and this should show us the frame which is going to be an empty frame that doesn't have anything which is what we have right now okay we have a couple things that are open here so let me just close them okay so um right now i need to add some more components but there is a window builder that's installed on eclipse here which is going to make my life way easier so i'll go ahead and right click on this and say open with window builder editor and then click on the design tab uh, the reason I created my frame is sometimes it's not going to allow you to parse unless uh, you have that um, frame layout at least now I need to add couple components here so I need to add uh, a label to hold in my image and I need to add a button but first I will add everything to a panel so I'll add a panel to the center here and the panel is going to allow me to place my items or components wherever I want by adding absolute layout so I will click on absolute layout and bring my cursor to the panel the edges are going to light up green click again and then we're all set we have the absolute layout on the panel now I will add my label and uh, I will resize my label to be some kind of a square because I have some images that I want to include and they look like probably this size again we can change the size anytime later on uh, what I would like to do as well is I change the variable names for those components so it's going to be easier for me to refer back to them in the code so my variable name for this label is going to be image label and you can choose any variable name that you want I will also change the text so it is going to display this text when I run the app so it is going to say uh, please click the roll button okay uh, let me position it somewhere to look like in the middle 
So probably right here. And then I will just get a button, place it somewhere here. And this is going to be the button that I'll click to roll. So I'll say click to roll. And then I will go ahead and change the variable name for the uh, button itself. So roll button. Again, you can leave those variable names as you as you have them, but um, I would like I, I like to change them to be easier for me to get to them in the code. Now let's test run it and see we have a problem where we don't see anything. And this is an easy fix. You can just come back to your source code and look where everything is added. So everything is added to the panel. So I'm adding the image label to the panel. I'm adding the button to the panel. But then I'm adding to the panel to the content pane. So I can just come right here and say frame dot get content pane. And then I will copy this line or just take out this line and put it right here. Because sometimes if you leave it up, up top, it is going to give you an exception. Because it's going to try to parse that line before you initialize your frame. So now I have everything is here. And I know I need to change the positioning of those. But we will do that later. So now I need to make sure that my button works. So I can go ahead and say implements action listener. And I will import action listener and then I will need to add the action performed. So you can go ahead and type it or you can just click here and say add unimplemented methods. And right here you will say uh, when the button is clicked, let me just create a random number. So random r is equal to new random. And then I will go ahead and create an integer for that ran from that random. I need to import that. So let me just create an integer here. Integer face, and I'll set it inside. What I would like to do usually is I will I would like to get all of those and um, declare them outside of the constructor, but then initialize everything inside the constructor. The reason I like to do this is it's going to allow me to access those components anywhere in my code. And um, I know for some of them we won't have to do this in this example, but I just have it as a habit of having everything declared outside and then initialized inside so I can use it anywhere. Now I had this integer called face and this is going to determine which face I have in uh, my image. Again, this is not necessary, but I'm including more variables to make the code easily understandable. So face is going to be r.next integer or why did I, it's going to be inside here why did I try to write in the mean method face is equal to r dot next integer and I will place the number six here and then I will say plus one why is that because if I just place the number six it's going to be a random number from zero to five if I say seven here it's going to be from zero to six but I need it to be from 1 to 6, so I'm shifting everything by 1, and the range here is from 1 to 5, I mean 0 to 5. So I need to add a listener to my button, so I would like to have everything in its own block. So right after this, I'll say roll button dot add action listener. And it is going to be this. And now I have a time. Okay. Now I need to make sure that my button works. So the easiest way to do this is system.r.print line. And then I'll print the face every time. So this is going to allow me to make sure that the button works. And I'm printing only numbers between 
um, one and six. So three, one, four. So I'm not exceeding six, and I'm not printing zero. So so far so good. I will just shift this by a little bit, and uh, we can do this in the code. So see this. It is x, y, and then uh, width height. So I want to shift it, let's say 200. And then let's make this 380. Again, you can do this in the designer, but you can always do this in the code. So now it looks a little bit better. Now I need to change this. And uh, this is going to happen in my action listener. But before I change this, I need photos. So what I have to do is I have to go to my files and then let me just go into this uh, course. I believe I just have them in here. So phase one through phase six. Okay. And I will need to go and look into my workspace and in my workspace I will look for my project so it is dice roller and then oh did I call it dice no it's dice I had another one that's something else that you will have to do as an assignment and again we will need to put paste those with the class file so I have F1 through F6 now I need this to be F1 through F6 but um, what I need to do first is remember that I have the image label on my panel so I will need to replace that with a new label okay so what I will have to do is the following whenever I click this button I will create my random number I'll create my face number and then after this first thing I want to do panel dot remove so I'll remove the current image label and then I will initialize the image label to a new thing and then add it back okay so um, my image label is going to be uh, containing an image and I need an image icon for this so let me go back up top right here and create uh, an image icon element so image icon die face and I will need to import that Okay, and I'll go back in here and I will create this image icon for my application. So what I have here is I call it die face is going to be equal to a new image icon and remember we have to say get class dot get resource and then I will provide this string in here so um, I can't place it right away by just saying if which is the letter F plus whatever face that I got and all of my images in that folder are dot png okay now this is nice type. Okay. Now the next the next thing I need to do is I need to have this in my image label. So image label is equal to new image label, and it is going to have the face of my die. So die face in here. And then 
I will say, I'll, I'll just get the same dimensions for my image label so I can come here and set the same bounds and then add that. So I just copy this back here. Um, this is J label, sorry, new J label. And then put this right here. So I have uh, everything added. And just to make sure that I refresh, I'll just say frame dot repaint. So repaint is going to refresh my frame. And I know that it's better to have this in a try catch block as I said in the previous video. But let's just test this out. Now this is what I have and as you can see these are the faces that I have and I'm able to go through those faces whenever I click. Now I talked about, I talked previously or briefly about like having another project that's called Dice Roller. So for that project I will ask you to do this similar app but we will have two dice not just one die here. So I'll have one and then another one and these should be different uh, in every role. So I know sometimes you will get two similar ones but these should be independent of each other that's what I wanted to say so if I click this this is two the other one should not necessarily be two okay and this is a simple dice roller app